We like war. We like war. We're a warlike people. We like war because we're good at it. And you know why we're good at it? Because we get a lot of practice. This country's only 200 years old, and already we've had 10 major wars. We average a major war every 20 years in this country, so we're good at it. And it's a good thing we are. We're not very good at anything else anymore. Huh? Can't build a decent car, can't make a TV set or a VCR worth the fuck. Got no steel industry left, can't educate our young people, can't get health care to our old people, but we can bomb the shit out of your country, all right? Especially if your country is full of brown people. That's our new job in the world, bombing brown people. Iraq, Panama, Grenada, Libya, you got some brown people in your country, tell them to watch the fuck out. Or we'll goddamn bomb them. Well, when's the last white people you can remember that we bombed? Can you remember the last white, can you remember any white people? We've ever bombed the Germans. Those are the only ones. And that's only because they were trying to cut in on our action. They wanted to dominate the world. Bullshit. That's our fucking job. And you probably noticed I don't feel about that war the way we were told we were supposed to feel about that war, the way we were ordered and instructed by the United States government to feel about that war. My mind doesn't work that way. I got this real moron thing I do, it's called thinking. And I'm not a very good American because I like to form my own opinions. I don't just roll over when I'm told to. Sad to say, most Americans just roll over on command, not me. I have certain rules I live by. My first rule, I don't believe anything the government tells me, nothing. No. Nope. And I don't take very seriously the media or the press in this country, who in the case of the Persian Gulf War were nothing more than unpaid employees of the Department of Defense, and who most of the time, most of the time, function as kind of an unofficial public relations agency for the United States government. So I don't listen to them, I don't really believe in my country, and I gotta tell you folks, I don't get all choked up about yellow ribbons and American flags. I consider them, I consider them to be symbols, and I leave symbols to the symbol-minded. I'm talking about the fact that a, a war is you know, rich old men protecting their property by sending middle class and lower class young men off to die. Forget these, these foolish elections. The owners of this country don't care about the poor in general. The owners and of this don't country? Care about what are we going? What, is this Karl Marx talking to me? The owners of this country are no. the voters of this no, country. You're wrong about that, my friend. Aren't, aren't the owners of this wrong. country the voters in this country no, who no, elected they're, George no, they're not. Bush? Listen, for politics, these elections are a charade. It is a charade. Oh, okay. it is, it is, they are not true. Well, I'll tell you, listen, just listen for a minute. Learn a little something. The ele elections and politicians are in place in order to give Americans the illusion that they have freedom of choice. You don't really have choice in this country. All of the things that are important, reduced in choice. Newspapers in a city, how many? Used to be three, four, now it's one or two. They're owned by the same people and they also own a radio station. Give these people a voting day every year so that they'll have the illusion of meaningless choice. Meaningless choice that we go like slaves and say, yo, I voted. The, the limits of debate in this country are, 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 are established before the debate even begins and everyone else is marginalized. They're made to seem either to be communists or well, some sort of disloyal person. A kook, there's a word. And now it's conspiracy. See, they've made that something that, that, is, that is, uh, sh should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy buff. Conspiracy buff.
Okay. Not as a result of a conspiracy, need, but you because... You don't need a formal conspiracy right. when interests converge. These people went to the same universities oh, and please. fraternities. They're on the it's same boards simple. of directors. They're on the same country clubs. They have like interests. They yes. don't need to call a meeting. They know what's good for them. It's a and they're getting it. And there, there used to be this... seven oil companies. There are now three. It will soon be two. The things that matter in this country have been reduced in choice. There are two political parties. There are a handful of insurance companies. There are about six or seven information things. But if you want a bagel, there are 23 flavors because you have the illusion. You have the illusion of choice. Right. You don't get the real important choice. There's no exactly. freedom of choice. That's a great point. All you ever hear about in this country is our differences. That's all the media and the politicians are ever talking about, the things that separate us, things that make us different from one another. That's the way the ruling class operates in any society. They try to divide the rest of the people. They keep the lower and the middle classes fighting with each other so that they, the rich, can run off with all the fucking money. Fairly simple thing happens to work. You know anything different, that's what they're going to talk about. Race, religion, ethnic and national background, jobs, income, education, social status, sexuality, anything you can do, keep us fighting with each other so that they can keep going to the bank. You know how I describe the economic and social classes in this country? The upper class keeps all of the money, pays none of the taxes. The middle class pays all of the taxes, does all of the work. The poor are there just to scare the shit out of the middle class. <laughs> Keep them showing up at those jobs. They're all the same. I'll show you politics in America. Here it is, right here. I think the puppet on the right shares my beliefs. I think the puppet on the left is more to my liking. Hey, wait a minute, there's one guy holding up both puppets. Shut up! Go back to bed, America. Your government is in control. I have this feeling, man, because you know there's a handful of people actually run everything. That's true. It's provable. It's not a fuck. I'm not a conspiracy nut. It's provable. A handful, very small elite run and own these corporations, which include the mainstream media. I had this feeling who's ever an elected president, like Clinton was, no matter what your promises you promise on the campaign trail, blah, 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 when you win, you go into this smoky room with the 12 industrialists, capitalist scum fucks who got you in there, and you're in this smoky room, and this little uh, uh, film uh, screen comes down, and a big guy in a cigar roll the film. And it's a shot of the Kennedy assassination from an angle you've never seen before. <laughs> that looks suspiciously off uh, the grassy knoll. And then the film, the screen goes up and the lights come up and they go to the new president. Any questions? Uh, just what my agenda is. First we bomb Baghdad. You got it. A lot of shit comes up that people would want to vote on. Like the bailouts, the war, all, all thing, things of this nature. There's a lot of things that people would like, that's gonna affect us. We would like to vote on this, but you don't get to vote on it. You get to vote on a representative. These people are gonna represent you once they get in, into office and think about some of the laws that are in place to protect corporations. Think about some of the laws that, that are in place that fuck people over every day. They wouldn't be there if people were voting for them. We all have this, this desire to have someone lead us. We all have this, this feeling where we need someone who's smarter and wiser, who represents us. You know, and when you're really fucking dumb, the problem is really dumb people, they get a say in everything too. And they're, they're subject to a lot of tricks. Mm -hmm. they're, subject to, they're subject to nationalism. They're subject to these kind of ridiculous rah, rah, rah America speeches that don't say jack shit. They say nothing. It's all just this cheerleading fucking yeah. event. And they, they're subject to it. They, they can't help it. They're dumb. They, they don't know they're being bullshitted. They, they grew up around dumb people. They go to work with dumb people. There's no one in their family that's interesting or asks any questions at all. And they just get sucked right into it, man. This society is so greedy, we're willing to go to war. We're willing to go places and send these big metal machines that kill people and fuck people up just so we can make more money. And the way our society is set up, I mean, I've heard it argued, and argued successfully, that our society runs on war. 
you know? It runs on the domination of uh, the other parts of the world. And literally, that's the only way you can control a gigantic chunk of the globe. You have to keep everybody down, you know? And that's what our society is based on. We can't be fighting over each other because, you know, this guy's are like a million people die in Iraq and everybody goes, hey, as long as it doesn't happen over here. But it is, right. that is over here. It's just right. over here, over there. It's yeah. the same thing. It's the people you don't know that were born somewhere else who fucking got jacked. You get trapped in that whole idea of, you know, this is my team, these are my people, and, you know, someone fucking plays a country music song and throws up a flag, and I'm in. Fuck it. It feels good. Feels good to be in, right? Feels good. God bless America. Feels good. Singing yeah. around with a bunch of other people, and you're all drinking. Right. We're the fucking baddest motherfuckers on the planet. Woo! And that's how people get recruited. It's a clusterfuck, man. These poor fucking kids, man. Could you imagine being 18, 19, being talked into doing this shit for a bunch of bloodthirsty motherfuckers who just are trying to get whatever they're trying to get over there, whatever the fuck it is, whether it's uh, lithium, you know, minerals in the mountains that they use to make cell phones, whether it's 90% plus of the world's opium supply, 90 fucking percent? That is a multi, multi billion dollar business. And if you think these fucking industrialist cocksuckers that are running the world are gonna leave that money behind, you're fucking crazy. Dude, they've got United States Army troops guarding Poppy Field. There's fucking so much heroin there. I mean, it's incredible. The fucking brother of the president of Afghanistan, his brother was selling heroin and getting paid by the CIA. I mean, god damn it. Heroin is absolutely addictive, okay? People who try heroin get hooked. Heroin is everywhere, okay? So you need to sell it. Someone's selling it. Who's selling it? I, I don't know, but 90% of it comes from this one place where we have to be to save our freedom. You, you can't criticize it. Because if you criticize it, you're a shithead. You don't appreciate the troops and what they're doing for you. And that's not the case at all. I just don't like the idea of these fucking people leading us in any direction where you need to sacrifice your life. Well, wait, I don't believe it. I don't believe them. When there's been so many fucking lies. I mean, the more you look it up, the more... I mean, you go, go into a, any of the stories on the weapons of mass destruction before we invaded and, and compare them to what we actually know that they really knew when they said that. It's like they did it on purpose. They wanted to get in there for whatever fucking reason. And if it's some crazy, the world is going to end if we don't stop this, but we can't tell you shit, like, I would love to believe you. I would love to believe that the reason why you're, you're not telling us exactly what the fuck is going on is because you're really protecting us from some insanely evil thing that if we knew about it, it would, society would collapse. But yeah. our strong, brave, powerful leaders are going to guide us yeah. without our knowledge. I yeah. would love to believe you. If you weren't all full of shit. We're going to have to step back and, and look at it all in a different way. And I don't think you're going to get that from just voting for president and dealing with all this nonsense that we have right now with the fucking, with the, the two-party system. It's just, we're spinning our wheels. We're not getting any traction. This is all nonsense. It's the same nonsense with Obama that we dealt with with Bush. Special interest groups controlling what people say and do and what direction the country goes in and save us from the bad guys. Just shut the fuck up, man. It's the same nonsense. Operation Northwoods it was something that was plotted out during the 1960s, signed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, where they were going to fake terrorist attacks on American civilians and blame it on the Cubans so we could go to war with Cuba. It involved a bunch of shit, like blowing up a jetliner. They were going to have a drone jetliner blow it up and say that people died on it. And this was going to get everybody fired up about going to war with Cuba. They were even going to attack Guantanamo Bay. They were going to arm Cuban friendlies to attack Guantanamo Bay so that we would have to go to war with Cuba. This is like our own government. They plotted this out. This is like real shit. I remember when I, I saw um, JFK, the uh, Oliver Stone movie. And that was like part of the premise that JFK, uh, that Oliver Stone was um, was pushing in this film, is that they killed JFK because they wanted to stay in Vietnam because they were making a lot of money in Vietnam. And I remember at the time seeing that movie going, that is absolutely ridiculous. Who the fuck believes that? Are they going to start wars and keep wars going just so that they can make money, even though it's not a real war, it's not a just war? Nobody wants to go to war. That's stupid hippie bullshit. Well, as I got older and I started investigating history, you know, from 
way back to Vietnam, to the Gulf of Tonkin, to all the shit that happened when Kennedy and Nixon were in office, to all the shit that happened with Reagan and the Contras in Nicaragua and the Sandinistas, and all the different various things that have happened in human history where it's clear that the United States is, you know, we're fucking around with all kinds of things all the time to make money. And that there's a bunch of people that are profiting off of war. And then they're not just profiting like a little bit of money here and there. You, you know, you look at like what's going on with like what, how much money Halliburton made from the war. We're talking like billions and billions of dollars. That's like real money. This Eisenhower leaving office and he's giving a speech warning the American people about the, the power of the military industrial complex. You know, when you watch that, you're like, well, here is a sitting president who's leaving office. And but the most important thing that he wants to tell people is that you have to be careful because there is a machine here that wants to go to war. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex.